Hi, I'm Orlando Marthos, Equipment Manager at the Creative Media Institute and New Mexico State University. Today I'm going to be showing you the overview and the walkthrough process of the Sound Devices 744T field mixers. Every equipment pack that you get from CMI is going to have an inventory tag on it that lists all of the items included in that pack. For the field mixer, you should have everything that you need to run production sound on any small scale production. What we're going to use is the 744T mixer. Now this is inside of a Porter Brace field bag and I'm going to take it out just for ease of explanation and showing you all how to use everything. Also included in your bag are XLR cables, uh, headphones, batteries, battery charger, TA3 cables, and everything else that you need to operate on set. Now here's what the 744T mixer looks like when it's not inside of the Porter Brace bag. Now I don't recommend you taking it out of the bag uh, for safety's sake and for protection of the device. Uh, when you get onto set, the first thing that you're going to want to do to set up your device is to mount the battery. Now the 744T runs off of your basic Sony L mount batteries. All you have to do to mount the battery is insert it into the cavity and click it into place. Getting the battery out though is a different story. There's a small little release button on the inside of the battery cavity that you probably won't be able to fit your finger inside of to push it. So you'd have to use something small and narrow like maybe a key or a pen or something like that to push in the release button and slide the battery out. Now the reason that it's so difficult is to make sure that you don't accidentally disengage the battery while you're walking around sound mixing. With your battery mounted, you can now turn on the device by pressing the power button located on the top right corner of the front face of the device. So now I'm just gonna give you a general walkthrough and overview of what all the buttons and connections are on the mixer. Starting from the front, we have our two gain controls for a channel one and channel two. We have a menu button that allows us access to the deeper functions of the mixer and allows us to customize everything. We have a hard drive or HDD button that allows us to pull up old files and also delete our hard drive or format it. We have our track navigation buttons as well as the play button. Here we have the stop button which will stop recording or playback. Our big record button which will obviously record a clip. We have, the, uh, we have the LED light button right here, which turns on or off the LED for the display of the device. And here we have a slate button that'll put a tone across all four channels of the mixer, allowing you to mark a slate. Here we have the quick input button that allows us to mute or unmute any of our inputs and of course the power button that we've gone over before. On the right side of the mixer, we have the menu select button that allows you to dial through all the different settings of the menu, or when you're recording, it allows you to monitor different channel sources. Here we have a time code sync input that allows you to jam your time code from either a camera or a generator to keep a consistent time, which makes it easier for editing. On this side, we have the digital input and outputs that you can run from the device. We have our Firewire 400 port, which allows you to connect to an external hard drive for recording or connecting to a computer for file transfer. Here we have the DC power in for the high rose connection that allows you to run DC power off of any household outlet. On the left side of the device, you have all of your microphone inputs, including two full-size XLR inputs, and two smaller TA3 or mini XLR inputs. You can select between mic or line input device. You can also run a line out stereo left and right through the TA3 connections as well. Located at the top, we have a headphone jack. This is where you'll plug in your headphones so that you can monitor your inputs as well as the headphone dial that allows you to raise or lower the volume of the headphones. Now keep in mind that they only adjust your headphones, not the actual input source. And finally, we have a tape out where you can run a balanced line out to say an external mixer or an exter another external recorder. The cool thing about the 744T mixer is that you can record your files in three different ways. 
You can record to the internal hard drive. You can run FireWire 400 out to a har external hard drive and record through there. And you can record to a CF card for easy file transfer. So now you wanna make sure that you set your mixer into the proper settings before you start recording. Inside of the main menu, there are 99 different options uh, or submenus that you can change or alter the different settings of the 744T mixer. First off, number one, the quick setup menu. Push that in and you can change to either a music settings or easy film settings. I like to go to the film settings since we're gonna be working on a film set. Use your scroll wheel to select it and push it in to confirm. You can also change your FireWire connection from here from either being an external hard drive or connecting to a computer for file transfer. Three is your record sample rate. We wanna make sure that we are recording in 48K. Next is your bit depth. We want to have 24 bit audio. Number five is our record file type. We wanna make sure that we're recording in Wave Poly. Now you wanna make sure that you have your sample rate, your bit depth, and your file type all set to those settings for all of your classes. Next is our media select, which allows you to select which uh, of your media sources that you wanna to record to, whether it's the internal hard drive, external hard drive, or the CF card, or all three at the same time. Number seven is one of the most important ones that you're gonna use, and that is your scene name and number settings. Clicking on it will allow you to add new settings like scene one alpha, scene two bravo, depending on whatever it is that the AC is marking on the slate, you're going to make sure that your sound files are going to be the same. Now a convenient thing about that is after you add these all to the memory, it's going to build a database of scenes for you to automatically pull up on the fly. Next we have our track names, our take name and number. We also have in the menu our pre-roll time, which will allow you to roll a couple of seconds before um, the, the actual scene takes place. Now there are a lot of other functions that you can access through this menu. And again, I'm only gonna give you the ones that you need for your classes. So if you wanna know more about that, you can always ask us or visit us in the equipment room and check out a user manual that will go into deeper detail about what the other submenus and settings are in the recorder. Now it's very important that you set this next step up before you start recording on set. What you wanna do is think about and pre-plan how many microphones you're actually going to be using in a given scene. Let's say for instance, we're using a boom mic and the lavalier mic. You'll want to go into your menu and starting with menu option number 17, the next following ones will all have to do with setting up your inputs properly. So starting with 17, it is our input routing. This allows us to set custom variations of which input channels are gonna to record to what recording channels. Now it's possible for you to record one input across multiple recording channels or vice versa. What we wanna do for the sake of this, and if we were gonna be doing four different microphones, is set it up in a very straightforward way. 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D. And you can verify that by the LED pattern of blue LEDs on the front of the device. In menu settings 18 and 19, we can turn on or off our 48 volt phantom power. Now remember, you only wanna do this if your microphone is not powered. Like say most of the boom mics that we have here are not powered, so you'll have to power them through the mixer using the 48 volt phantom power. So let's turn on input one phantom power and turn off input two phantom power. That way if we connect a wireless lavalier microphone that's already being powered by the radio packs, we're not double powering it through the mixer. So now I'm gonna show you how to connect a couple of the different cables that you'll be using in your classes and for your projects. First off is the hi -Rose DC power adapter. Now this is a very tricky cable to connect into the device and there's only one right way to do it. On the side of your device, you have the hi -Rose female adapter with the four pins on there. But if you look on the outside, you'll see a series of different notches. You wanna make sure that you align the notches and it'll click into place. Next is the FireWire 400 cable, which you can just plug straight into the FireWire 400 port on the side of the mixer. The other end will go to either your computer or external hard drive. 
Make sure that if you are using one of those two that you select the device in your menu settings. So if you're using something like a boom mic or a lavalier mic that has a full-sized XLR connection, you can plug it straight into your ports. Now it's very important that if you are using a microphone that is already powered, that you disable the phantom power on that input. You can always tell whether or not you have phantom power enabled by the LED button on the front of the device. Do not plug in an already powered line into a phantom powered line as that could be too much power and it could fry or damage some of the internal components of either the mixer or of your microphone. So let's say that we're using a boom mic and that needs to be powered. With phantom power on, we could connect the XLR cable to the XLR port. You line up the three prongs and it goes straight in and clicks into place. Make sure that you have your settings set to mic so that the device knows that it's receiving a mic signal. Similar to the XLR cables is how we connect our TA3 or mini XLR cables to the device. You wanna make sure you're either going into three or four, line up the prongs, and it'll click right into place. Do not force it if it doesn't fit. If you have to force it, you're probably doing it wrong. To remove the cable, push the little tab and pull straight out. To connect your headphones, all you have to do is take your headphone jack and plug it right into the female end of the mixer. So I've plugged in a couple of different types of microphones into the sound mixer to show you how to adjust the input source gain. Now I've got two small shotgun microphones running into channels one and two and a wireless lavalier microphone running into channel three. Adjusting the gain on channels one and two is very simple. All you have to do is push in the wheels to pop them out and adjust the dials to either raise or lower the gain levels. And as I bring the dial up, you'll see that the levels on channel one are getting higher or lower. We wanna make sure that we don't get any red peaking dots because that means we're getting bad quality recording and there's very little you can do in post to fix any of those peaks. We wanna make sure we get a nice mid-range with mostly green, maybe a couple of orange in there. Adjusting channels three and four, which are your TA3 inputs, and what I have here is the wireless lavalier microphone. To adjust that gain, it's a little more difficult. You have to enter into your menu and scroll down to numbers 33 and 34 of your menu. And in there, you can adjust your input gain levels. You want to make sure that you set this up before you start rolling. So when you're ready to go, you want to find out what scene and take that you're doing and adjust your file settings accordingly. So enter the main menu and scroll down to number seven. You can add a new entry. And let's say that we are doing scene three Bravo. We're going to scroll our wheel to three and then B for Bravo. Now I know this seems kind of time consuming, but once you set it up once, you don't have to do it again. Now that we have the scene number set up, let's adjust our take number. Go down to menu number nine. And here you can set all the different take numbers that you want. If we're doing the first take, then we let's go on take number one. Now, once we hit record, we're gonna be recording on scene three Bravo, take one. Now that you have your headphones ready and your microphones leveled and ready to go, all you have to do to start recording. To do so, all you have to do is press the big record button on the bottom right hand side of the device. You know you're recording when you see the LED light lit and your time code will start running. But for most purposes, whenever the director calls cut, all you have to do is press the stop button. Now, when you press the stop button, the device will automatically advance the file onto the next take for you. So now that I've showed you how to record takes and files onto your device, now I'm gonna show you how to get the files off. Depending on which media format you were recording to, whether it was a CF card, the internal recorder hard drive, or an external hard drive, there is a series of steps that you have to take in order to remove the files. 
since we recorded onto the internal hard drive, I'm going to show you how to remove the files from the hard drive. You want to make sure that you have a battery that's fully charged or that you plug into the DC power, otherwise it won't work. You'll power on your device and using the firewire cable included in your bag, you'll plug one end into the device and the other end into the firewire port of your computer. If your computer does not have a Firewire 400 port, you may require a special kind of adapter in order to use it. With it connected to your computer, bring up the main menu, go down to option number two, Firewire Connection, and change it to Computer Connect. After a couple of seconds, the device will pop up as a removable drive on the desktop of your computer. Now oftentimes on set, everything is moving at a very fast pace and sometimes things aren't working in the way that you want them to. It's very important that you're able to troubleshoot some of these common issues on set. Another common issue that people run into is they can't remove the battery. Now again, first you want to make sure that you power off the device completely and wait for it to give you the okay before you start to remove the battery. It takes a few seconds to power down completely. With the screen dimmed, you know that the device is powered off. Remember, you cannot just pull the battery off. And if you try to do so, you run the risk of severely damaging the device. Make sure that you use a small item like a screwdriver or your keys or a pen to push down the release tab on the inside of the battery cavity. With that pushed in, you can now slide the battery back and out. One of the most common mistakes that people run into on set is that their inputs aren't routing to the proper channels and they don't know how to fix that. Now remember, all you have to do is look at the front of the device at the blue LED lights and it'll tell you exactly where each of your inputs is routing to what channel letter. So right now we have input one to channel A, input two to channel B, input three to channel C, and input four to channel D. Now we don't have any duplicate channels or any overlapping channels. All you have to do to change your input routing is open the main menu, scroll down to number 17, and from there, you can patch your inputs to whatever channels you like. And you can even set custom ones if you like. Another common issue that people run into is they have their mics going, they're getting good levels, but they can't hear anything in their headphones. Chances are, you're not monitoring the proper channels. Make sure that you cycle your dial to the right channels, and you'll see it displayed at the bottom of the screen, make sure that it's set to the right ones that you wanna be monitoring. Either input one and two, three or four, or channels like A and B or C and D, or any combination of those. Another common issue that people have is they've plugged in a microphone and they're adjusting the gain control, but they're not getting any or accurate levels. Now, nine times out of 10, the problem is that they're using a powered mic, but phantom power has not been enabled. All you have to do is open up your menu, scroll down to numbers 18 and 19, and pick which input source you want to turn phantom power on. And now, we should see accurate levels. And when we adjust the gain, we should see the levels change accordingly. Now, oftentimes, if you're using multiple mics, and you plug in microphones into the TA3 channels three or four inputs, if you need to adjust the gain or say that you're not getting a good enough signal, a lot of times people don't know how to do that. All you have to do is open up your menu and scroll down to menu items 33 or 34, and from there, you can dial in your exact gain input. Now remember, you wanna do this before you start rolling because it's hard to dig through the menus during a take. So I've just walked you through the basic setup and operation of the Sound Devices 744T Field Mixer. Now, I only scratched the surface and the basic operation of it. There's so much more that this device can do that we didn't even touch upon. If you ever have any questions, just come down to the equipment room and ask us and we'll let you know on what the other options are that may or may not be useful for your different shoots or projects. 
Again, I'm Orlando Marthos. We'll see you again for the next training video.